the Star Child because of its small size and otherworldly shape. The anomalies of the skull, I think, start with completely different from human eye sockets. The skull could possibly be from a hybrid humanoid. The physical differences include eye sockets that are less than an inch deep, half that of a normal human. The opening for the optic nerve, usually in the back of the socket, is located at the inside corner. They were just a completely different eyeball than what we have, a completely different eye mechanism than what we have. DNA testing has only deepened the mystery. They re recovered the mitochondrial DNA very easily of the star child. First test, no problem. It has a human mother. All that was left was to do the nuclear DNA recovery of the star child. And in six full, complete, rigorous attempts to recover its nuclear DNA, they were unable to do so. The skull weighs half as much as a normal human skull, and the bone itself is less than half as thick, yet far denser. Additionally, the skull lacks normal sinus cavities and a brow ridge. If you do chemical analysis of the bone, which we've done with a scanning electron microscope, what we discovered was that the bone of the star child is not really like human bone. It's more like tooth enamel. We also found fibers that were woven through the matrix of the bone. And the reason this was surprising is because there's no other bone on Earth that has fibers woven through the matrix of the bone, like a reinforcing kind of thing. They were very durable because the Dremel blade had shredded the ends of them, but it hadn't cut them free. It hadn't cut them completely off like you would think it would. Very, very surprising. Now, the Monster Quest science team will perform new analysis. Bioarchaeologist Dr. Susan Meister will attempt to determine if the skull is human or any other known creature. When you look at the skull, you're startled uh, because it looks quite abnormal. You have a small um, upper part of the face and then you have this very expanded lateral portion of the vault, and then you have a very flat posterior or back part of the skull. So it looks quite odd. Dr. Meister will also try to determine the age, gender, ancestry, and the cause of its abnormalities. I would first like to look it over, just looking at the general morphology, uh, in terms of trying to determine what might have affected it. So was the skull exposed to the weather, to the elements? Had it been buried at one time? Uh, is there any indication that modification occurred? And then also to determine if there's anything unusual or abnormal about the skull that may indicate that it's not a human skull. She will also test the skull to determine if it is indeed made of a substance harder than human bone. By applying the shore hardness test, I hope to be able to get a good reading on the resistance of the skull uh, to this pressure, uh, and therefore to see if it's significantly different than the hardness of a, of a known human skull. The fact that the skull is not complete complicates her analysis. The skull is missing most of the face, so all you have are the top borders of the orbits. Bill Munns, a specialist in forensic reconstruction, will examine a cast of the skull. He will fill in the missing anatomy and see if it bears any resemblance to the Flatwoods monster. My first perception was to see how different this skull was than a normal human figure. He will then build a model of what this hybrid human would look like. Is this a biologically a human skull, an alien skull, or something halfway in between? In my particular approach to it, I decided that the only responsible approach that I can take is to treat it as if it is entirely human. So in my approach, I decided to use everything as biologically realistic and credible as I can. The 
expedition is in Frametown, West Virginia, the site of the latest encounter with a strange, half-human creature locals call the Flatwoods Monster. The team will set up camp at a vantage point called James Knob, the highest peak in the Appalachian foothills. The team inflates a helium balloon to carry a thermal night vision camera to conduct a stealth reconnaissance of the mountainside. The witnesses describe an orb or fireball-like light. One theory is that a release of gases from the underground coal systems may be causing hallucinations. This gaseous release could create a heat signature that would show up on the infrared camera. Ignited gas would also explain the fireball and glowing orbs that the witnesses have seen. You guys ready? Okay. Ready. There we go. There she goes. Monster Quest is searching the Appalachian Mountains for evidence of the Flatwoods Monster, which has been spotted here many times over the last 60 years. This thing is coming towards the car. George and Edith Snitowski were traveling through Braxton County with their baby when they had a bizarre encounter. Frank Fischino interviewed George Snitowski shortly before his death in 1996. As a couple were proceeding into the Franktown area, the car suddenly went dead. Snitowski got out to check the battery, but found nothing wrong. George had turned around and he looked off into the, the woods and he saw something glowing. Cautiously, he walked toward the strange light. And as he started near and closer towards it, he started feeling these uh, pricklings going through his body like a low voltage electrical shock, and it went through his whole body. Just as Snitowski was about to turn back, he was overcome by a sickening sulfur smell that knocked him to his knees. Something was coming up behind George. Snitowski staggered to his feet to find a monster towering over him. It was a good nine feet tall. It was this reptilian type creature from the head to the waist. He could actually see this humanoid creature, but from the waist down, it looked like a booster rocket or a cone-shaped object. Exactly what was described in Flatwoods. And it was hovering and coming across the ground. Stutowski ran for the car. And he looked up straight through the windshield of the car. And this nine-foot-tall humanoid was looking down at him. The area is covered with this low-lying smoke sulfur type smell and they're gagging uh, they're choking the couple huddled in fear as the bizarre creature slowly circled their car before gliding back into the woods and this creature actually leaned down with its long spindly arm and instead of having five digits there were actually two long fingers and it touched the hood of the car and when it touched the hood of the car, it actually burnt through the paint right down to the primer. The sighting occurred just 24 hours after the first witnesses reported seeing the beast. Fashino worked with Snitowski to create this drawing of the creature, which differed only slightly from what Freddie May saw.
The conclusion that I have drawn from this thing is this seems to have been the same humanoid seen in both cases. When it was seen on September 12th, it wore a full suit. It was basically like a suit of armor. When it was seen the following night, the upper portion of the suit was gone. The science team has located samples gathered after the original sighting and is examining them. The, the vial that I have here contains those, those black samples that uh, were pointed out to me as possibly being suspect. Chemist Dr. Philip Doherty is also comparing modern soil and wood samples recovered from the same area by the expedition team. Dr. Doherty is looking for trace toxins that might have nauseated witnesses or caused them to hallucinate. The extraction process was designed to remove any volatile or semi-volatile materials from the soil and the wood that would have not been normal or natural within the environment. The expedition team has launched its aerial reconnaissance of the area surrounding the most recent sighting. There's a, a lot of weird things seen around here. There's a lot of things going on in this one particular area of the mountains where it's a mile to a mile and a half squared out area where all this, these funny things are going on. The team has a thermal camera in the air and a second one on the ground. They should be able to detect anything that gives off a heat signature. What's that? that? See that red? That's that's it. That shows up in the camera. I think we got a hot spot up there, Frank. Monster Quest is investigating sightings of monster humanoids in the isolated wilderness of Appalachia. The beast was most recently seen by a lone hunter. What startled him is the eyes. Joe Smith was hunting for deer a half mile southeast of the hilltop known as James Knob. It was overgrown. There was a lot of weeds and backdrop. There's all of these trees. Suddenly, the hunter noticed something strange along the tree line. There were these three humanoid types creatures. Uh, he told me they were like uh, a white color. They, the tops of their heads were like an ace of spades. He described these creatures as having the same covering. They weren't flesh. He didn't see any faces. And they were staring at him. He said they were absolutely still. The hunter stared back, frozen with fear his weapon forgotten. As he was staring at them, he was telling me about the eyes. These eyes were not like eyeballs. They were like openings with eyeballs in behind them. Mm. The man's description is similar to those of previous witnesses. They're amazingly similar. So it's hard for me to